months after massive floods devastated the city of Lismore, the scars are still plain to see. As the community deals with an excruciatingly slow rebuild and recovery. Many of us in the community just don't, we've kind of been stuck. Not, not been able to prepare properly for floods or to fix our lives. You want to sit? North Lismore resident Naomi Worrell was one of thousands rescued from their flooded homes. I was fully cognizant to the fact that I was one of thousands. Like I knew that I would not be, I wasn't the only person stuck on their roof or in their house. I imagined I was surrounded by people drowning and you know, hoping my dog was okay on the bench. She is now living in limbo not willing to fix her home if the government wants to buy it back. You know, you, you've lost everything. You don't want to be spending the tiny bit of money you have or the tiny bit, you know, the, the time that you have or the resources you have pouring it into to something that, you know, you might have to leave behind. Like, why fix the houses if they're going to bulldoze them? Last month, the federal and New South Wales governments announced a joint $800 million package to help buy back some of the most flood-affected properties so the owners can make a new home elsewhere. This is the biggest of agreement of its kind ever in response to a very significant event. More than 600 people are living in pod villages and caravans, just have to walk down some of the streets and, and you'll see those empty shops and lots and lots of for sale signs. So if people aren't reading the tea leaves at the moment about what's happening, I think it, it's silly. We, we need to start thinking creatively. Ridley Bell heads one of the nation's biggest blueberry operations, employing hundreds of people. He also runs this former North Lismore hotel turned soup kitchen for the homeless, which was gutted by the floods. Well, the water came through above the ceiling. The Reconstruction Corporation is overseeing the rebuild, but questions remain on how to restore confidence in a city crushed. Is it viable for individuals in Lismore? I think that's the real question. That's why we've got to make decisions now that are viable for the future. We can't afford to keep putting band-aids on this problem. Lismore is Australia's most flood-prone postcode. My first memory as a child is being rowed out in a boat in 1945 in torrential rain. Beth Travan has lived through 11 major floods over decades, the local community has been calling for major flood mitigation works. Yeah, just history repeating itself. A levy was completed in 2005 to protect the CBD from a one in ten year flood. But that levy has been breached by floodwaters twice this year. If you need a major mitigation project of some sort, it takes a long time. In response to the catastrophic flooding, the CSIRO is now leading what's known as the Northern Rivers Resilience Initiative, an $11 million flood mitigation study funded through the National Emergency Management Agency. It is tasked with recommending what long-term solutions are possible for a city crippled by its geography. Mitigation scenarios can be either building a storage like a dam or you can have a upstream storage where you divert the water and store it at some other location rather than on the river. The CSIRO work centres on the Richmond River catchment, producing a model to test past flooding events and predict the consequences of any new mitigation measures. We will not be getting a silver bullet or a golden bullet that a solution, but we can then test scenarios whether can we reduce the impact of floods and those results that we get will be reliable 
and future investments can be done by the federal and state governments to do those mitigation measures. Lismore's mayor believes those mitigation measures are essential for business and community confidence. We're on a major transport link, we're at the heart of an agricultural food bowl. You know, Lismore needs to be here to service the industries in and around it. Um, you can't ride off a town because of a geographical anomaly. The CSIRO will recommend shovel-ready options by the end of November, but its comprehensive flood study for Lismore and the Richmond Valley is still two years away. If they can come up with a, a flood mitigation report that says this is, you know, we can do this, you know, we've got seven waterways that feed into the into the uh, Leicester Creek and Wilsons and and uh, we can mitigate through that, um, the levee maybe. If I could see that, uh, I, I think it'd be wonderful. If they could solve the flood problem by looking very seriously and implementing the outcomes of the CSIRO study, the nation would be saved billions of dollars because it would reduce the impact of flooding in this whole region.